Hi there everyone, welcome to the uh, Sin 7 8th webinar on covering the B2B portal. Uh, today we're going to be covering some setup and also some configuration options uh, as well as a general uh, view at how that your customers can use the B2B portal. Um, so just before we start, I'm um, Daniel Masters. I'm part of the support team at Sin7. Uh, I am in the general support, but I also specialize in integrations and also uh, I've had a lot of experience dealing with the um, B2B portal. Uh, so, so who is the session for? Um, it would, we've got some new customers who are looking to sign up and use use the B2B portal uh, to help with their business and also existing customers who are maybe looking at setting up the B2B portal and aren't too sure where to start or they've maybe got some questions or they don't know the full functionality. Um, and also existing customers who are already using it um, and they might want to see if they can utilize it in a different way or um, to see some changes that we've made recently. Um, we've had an updated interface uh, to make things a bit more smooth and um, I'm going to be showing you that today. Um, so, so for the webinar today, I will be using the latest interface. Um, so some of you may not be familiar with it. Um, there have been a few changes that we've made recently um, just based on quests we've had. Um, so there will be some older customers who have already had this update, um, so, so they'll be familiar with it already. Um, if you are using the B2B interface and you have an older version, we're um, not going to be able to take requests to update through the webinar um, just because of the volume and also it takes a bit of um, configuration to do. So if you'd like to update your interface, feel free to put through a support ticket to the um, Sin7 support team and they can look into that for you. Um, I also have my colleague Jo um, in the meeting and she's going to be answering questions via the chat function. So if you have any questions which you'd like answered, um, feel free to put those in through there and she'll be responding throughout the webinar. Uh, if there's anything she can't answer straight away or it will take some looking into, um, we will be um, taking down your details and we'll be responding via email after the webinar. Um, so. Don't worry if you don't get a response straight away. Um, at the end, I'll also be doing a live Q&A, so uh, you can put your hand up through the uh, GoToWebinar and we'll be selecting a few and you'll be unmuted and can ask the question and we'll be answering it. Uh, so th today we'll be looking at uh, what is the B2B portal and what's it used for and how it can help you. Uh, also how to set it up, um, just an overview of the use and then Q&A at the end as I mentioned. So first thing, what is the B2B portal? It's an online ordering channel for your customers to place orders directly into your system and view your stock directly from the system, basically. Um, so you log into Sin7 and you can see your stock and your orders and everything that you don't want to give access to your customers for that. Um, so the B2B is a good way for them to view and also to place an order and then it comes directly into your system. So. It's an alternative to a customer phoning up or emailing 
um, which would require manual data entry. So this is a quick way for them to view your products, place an order, and it comes directly into your system. So the B2B portal is not intended to be like an e-commerce website where you are trying to acquire and you're marketing and um, you're trying to make sales um, to you know, new customers. So this is intended to be for your existing customers, which you've intentionally provided access to them to, to view. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the settings now. Um, so the first thing that you'll have to do, if you've never used the B, B before, um, you can add the Web Central module into your account. Um, so this will be through the standard settings menu, so you will need to be logged in as the admin. Um, you go to Select Integrations, and this account already has it, so um, you'll tick this B2B website and create at the bottom. And what that will do is under admin and reports, it will add the B2B website link here. Um, you won't be able to use it just yet. There's still a few other things to check. So we'll go back into the settings menu and we've got under B2B online ordering, we've got the security options here. So this will set the initial security options so that you can control what your customers see and what is what information is available. So uh, the default will be public can view, oh, sorry, log in to view um, products. Um, you can choose one of these other options. So um, if you want your customers to view the products, but not the pricing, so they can uh, so they can view the products, but your pricing is secure. Um, generally, it would be log in to buy. You don't want someone stumbling upon your B2B site and just placing an order when you don't know who they are. Um, and we'll set it to accounts can only be created by staff so that the public can't register for an account, which is what's more used. And the stock indicators, uh, we want the customer to be able to see the stock available figures so that they know how much is able to be ordered. Um, and we can show this, the stock figures based on particular branches. So if we only want to show what's in our retail store and our main branch, then we'll do that in there. Um, so the next thing will be a domain. So if you have your own domain name, it might be, if you have a retail store, it might go, uh, sorry, a, an e-commerce website. At your main domain may be going there already. So obviously we've got since7.com and that goes to our customer facing website. Um, and our B2B portal, we want as a subdomain within that domain. So we've got sales.sin7.com added here um, to access the B2B portal. So that means that if we go to sales.sin7.com, this is our B2B portal here. Um, you can also add in uh, a domain which is um, owned by Sin7, so um, this .datum.tv. So, so you can add this in by default yourself. Um, so you would usually put your company name .datum.tv. So for today, I'm just going to go webinar.datum.tv. And then if I copy this, 
webinar.atom.tv will go to the to this BB portal. Um, so you won't be able to use that because um, it has to be unique for each account, um, but you can use your own one, which will usually be your company name. Um, and if you are using your own domain, um, there will be some um, some domain records to set up for, for this to work. Um, uh, if you ask a good question or submit a ticket to support, we can um, help you out with that. Um, so I'll just go into the categories first. So currently we've got these four categories which are switched on and then we've got these two which are switched off. Um, so the switching off doesn't affect your reporting or anything in SIN 7, it's just the display on the B2B. So if we go back to the settings menu and go to the product settings, um, there's, um, there's an option here to show B2B website options and I've got that set to yes and then we'll save that. And what that will do is in our products module, if we open up a product, it will show this panel here, which has got um, additional image fields. Um, and it's also got the description box here, which we can use the word editor to add in a description for the product. Um, and the other thing it does is in the category edit, it will add in this panel here, which allows us to put a description and also to show or hide it on the B2B. So this apparel category is currently set to show, so it will be displayed on the B2B. Um, so you can see it in here. And if we go back here, um, you'll see that we've got no food category here. But if I want to show that on the B2B, I will go into here. So click edit on that food category, switch it from hide to show, save and close that. Now if we go back to here, you'll notice that it still doesn't show up. And the reason for that is under actions here. Um, so again, you'll need to be logged in as an admin to access the actions. And we go to update website category navigation. And what that does is it triggers the B2B to reproduce the, uh, to refresh the categories. Um, and you'll also notice if you haven't got any products in the category, it's still not going to show. So there must be um, a product that's assigned to that category in order for it to show. It's just loading. So I'll show you the other um,
Oh, sorry about that. I think that might have been an internet problem. Okay, so uh, so we've switched this food category back on, and we'll go to date navigation again. to this. Uh, so if we look at images, um, this will be in Web Central. Uh, if we go to the home page, and so what we're wanting to do is add in a new banner here. So you'll see that these ones have already been inserted here, and we'll add a new one here. Uh, so I've got one saved on my computer, and we'll just upload this banner here. Go upload, and insert image out of the image uploader, and then save this. And if we refresh this page, you'll see that there's now a third banner in here. Um, and you can also add in a link um, if you want it to go somewhere to another page or to a category. So what I've set up down here is the iPhone range. And if we click on this banner, it will go directly to the mobile phones category, which is under electronics. Um, and we can view that product there. Um, so another setting, which is in the security options, is to show products only if the price exists. So what this means is that if there is a price, in the customer's price column, they will see that product, and if not, it will be hidden to them. So if we've got a wholesale customer who's assigned to the wholesale category or the wholesale pricing column, um, they'll see these products here. But this one here, the Nike socks, which are $0, they're not going to view that through the B2B. So it's a way of restricting products if you don't want certain customers to be able to um, purchase those. So if we take a look at the customer setup, um, through the settings menu, um, go to the CRM settings, and um, we've got this show B2B website options on yes, and we'll just go to the end of this. So now if we open up a customer, um, we've got a wholesale customer here. So they're set to the wholesale price column. And you'll also see that the B2B website options are here. So we've given them a password and they will be logging in using the email address here. So if you're just doing testing or you want to see what is available to that customer or basically what they'll see. Um, we've got an auto login, auto customer login function here. So that will let you log in on behalf of them. And this will bring them directly to their My Account page, um, which has the details and also a list of their past orders. And they can view their invoices here. Um, so as this is a wholesale customer, um, they will only see the products which are which have a wholesale price. 
So if we are looking at um, So the Nike socks don't come up there because that customer doesn't have access to them. Um, so that um, website category navigation is completed now. Um, so you'll notice that the food category, which was previously switched off, um, we set that to active to show on the B2B and it's now showing up here. Um, so that customer will see this category and we've got some products in there. Um, so this is one of the differences which you'll notice from the old interface, if anyone is familiar with that. Um, the Add to Cart button is available on this page. Um, so you can quickly add to the cart and if a product has multiple options, um, such as this chair, um, so you'll open it up, it will pop up, and um, you select the, the options by putting the quantity in here. Um, so this is now what's in the cart. Um, you'll also notice that this, um, these three cheesecakes here are available to sell. This one here, if we open it up, you'll see that it's sold out. And the reason that they're not able to purchase this is because if we open up the cheesecake in Sin 7, so this is the strawberry one, This one here, the order type is set to limited stock. And limited stock means once it's out of stock, it's not available for purchase. Um, whereas if we look at the other ones, um, this is actually set to a kit. So it could either be kit or order. And an order is just a standard, standard ordering product. Um, so just leave that as that. And so although this is actually out of stock, um, it's still available to purchase. Um, and if we look at some furniture items as an example, if we go to designer clothing, open this one up. <clears throat> uh, this one actually already has stock. Uh, if we look at this polo, so this is a limited stock um, fashion item, so it's utilizing the color size grid. And as it's limited stock, once a size sells out, it's not available to purchase. So if we change that polo, so you'll see this is limited stock. If we set that to order, which means it's a standard order product, save that. And if we open it up again, uh, even though it's out of stock, it's still available for purchase, which means um, you may be putting it on back order or you may be um, having stock incoming. So you'll still want it to be purchased, even though it's not on hand at this current time. Um, and so you'll notice that the customer will see their specific price column as well as only seeing the products in that price column. So this um, wholesale price, if we look at the polo again, so that's a wholesale price of $45 and this is the price they're paying for it. Um, and if we look at a, uh, so you'll see that they actually don't see anything in the mobile phones category. And the reason for that is that the um, iPhone product here, uh, it doesn't have a wholesale price, so it's restricted to only retail or VIP customers. So, 
So if we log out of here, <clears throat> um, another thing that you'll notice on the, um, this is just regarding the domains, if you click the logo, which takes you back to the home of the, um, of the B2B, if you use the auto customer login, it will actually log you in at go.sin7.com, um, which means that if you click on this, um, it will take you back there. So don't panic about that. Um, your customers won't experience that if they're at your domain. So if we go to sales.sin7.com um, and you click on that, it will go, it will go back to back to the correct home page. Um, so that's just related to set, once you've set up the domain. Um, so instead of using auto customer login, if we just um, do a standard login, so this is a better idea of what the customer will see. Um, so we're at sales.sin7.com and we're going to login. And we'll just copy this email address. Um, so yeah, this will be a retail customer. And copy that password. And so this is their login. So they can navigate around here. And if they click on this, it will actually go to sales rather than going to sin 7 um, and if we open up the mobile phone category for this customer, which is retail, um, because there's a retail price on the iPhone, um, it will be available for them to buy. Um, so if we bring up uh, the t tips on use. So we've gone through customer logins. Um, and a few configuration options. Um, I'll also show um, some of the other stock indicators. So um, at the moment, we've got the actual stock figures showing. And if we go back to change the security settings, um, if we don't want our customers to view the actual stock, we can show the um, indicator, and so that will just indicate to them whether it is in stock or not. So if we open up this, it will show that it's low stock. There's not many in stock. This one is available. Uh, and if we go to a product which is out of stock, Uh, so these are all either low stock or available, uh, and these ones are all available. Uh, so these ones, I believe, will be out of. Uh, uh, yeah, so this one's sold out. So that's just an indicator rather than showing the actual rather than destroying the actual stock figures. And if we wanted to not restrict our customers to the products which are in their price column, um, we can show all active products. So what that means is that anything which is set to public here um, will be shown to the customers logging into the B2B. So this will be um, show public. Um, if you set it to show in B2B, this will not show to retail customers. It will only show to customers who are VIP or wholesale um, or a custom price column, um, secure and internal or off and active will not show on the B2B at all. Um, so we've, we've set that to show all active products now in the security settings. Um, so we'll just go back to this wholesale customer. And if we log in, um, so he'll see everything as before. 
Um, however, there's additional products because these products don't have a wholesale price. And therefore, uh, if we look in the mobile phones, um, you'll see this is $13.99. Um, so because the because there's no wholesale price, it's going to default back to the retail price. So um, they're obviously not going to purchase it at zero dollars. Um, so it just falls back to retail. Um, another useful thing to do for Ensign 7 is um, we've got a dashboard report which will show your latest orders so um, maybe if uh, you weren't keeping an eye on your sales orders um, didn't see that it come, came through and um, we've got a dashboard report here um, so if you click add um, so this will only show if you've already added the B2B website module to your account um, so you'll have to do that through the settings menu uh, and then I'll just add that to my dashboard and you'll see these are the latest orders coming through here. So if we go back in here um, and we'll just log in as this customer here. Um, so you can, you can do this if you're, if you're just trying it out through the auto customer login but um, if we want to see it, how the customer sees it, um, we'll do it at the domain, which is sales.sin7.com, um, and we'll use their login and password. Um, and we'll just purchase one of these, and one of these, add that to cart, and we'll also buy it. A cheesecake. Um, so it's as simple as that to add it to the cart and we'll select the uh, delivery country and the freight option. Um, so this being to be confirmed means that um, you'll basically calculate the freight cost in SIN 7 um, and it send that to them via the invoice for them to pay. Um, rather than calculating it in here. Um, if you don't know due to not knowing um, the volume of their order and um, exactly um, how, how much they need and what timing. Um, so we'll fill out these details. Um, and we'll just put that on the on account option um, as it's a wholesale customer um, they may want to be built separately at the end of the month or um, however you go about doing that um, so this will give them a confirmation here um, showing everything they've ordered and all the details and they will approve that order and so the customer will get an email to their address telling them that uh, just with the details of the order and also based on the payment options it will um, give them this here um, we can this can be obviously edited in the in the settings um, to your details um, otherwise if you're going to be billing them later at the end of the month, then you might want to just remove this completely. Um, so that's been completed. And if we go to my account, uh, we'll see this new reference here. And if you come back into SIN 7, we should see it on the dashboard report. So that's it there. And if we open that up, um, you'll see all of those details in there um, and the freight to be confirmed so you can add this in and potentially email them their invoice Uh, 
so if we now just move on to some questions, um, there might be some additional things to go through. Um, so I will just open up this to um, some questions. So if you raise your hand, um, we can unmute you and um, and answer some questions. Cool, so uh, we've got a question here from Alan, so I'll just um, unmute you, Alan, um, and you can ask the question. Hi there. Is that better? Uh, yep, we need that. Good. Okay, picture size. Yep. It's more of a problem rather than a direct question, but picture size of a product, yep. when looking back at a someone's account, the picture size is overlaps and falls outside the square, but when you're looking at products, all the pictures are good. Uh, a major it, it, size. Would that be in the my account section? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So when? Uh, yep. So that is actually something we're aware of. Um, uh, that. That's right. Leave it then. That's all right. If you're working on it, that's good. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is a pain because we're about to resize all the pictures and make them smaller. But someone sure. said, but they're okay in products. Yeah. So, no. Okay. No. We are aware of that. Um. So. I'll, I'll actually, just because you've brought that up, I'll, I'll um, try to get an update on that from the developers. But yes, they are aware, aware of it. You'll have it fixed on Monday for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that will actually only apply in the older interface. The the updated interface, um, it's, it's actually correct. Um, so if you do want to update your interface, um, yeah, put a, put a support request through. Update. Um, yeah, so if you put a support request through, we can um, update your interface and it should fix it for you. Excellent. Cool. Okay, yep, thanks for that. <laughs> um, so I've got a question here from Duncan. Uh, I'll just unmute you, Duncan. Can you hear me? Hi there. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, just a, a quick question. Can a customer once logged in reorder from items that they've got in their history as opposed to have to shop around the site? Uh, yes, we do actually have an option for that. Um, I believe because this is a trial account, it won't actually show up. Um, but there is... Uh, yes, um, so... Basically, what you can do is, uh, yeah, it, so I think it has to be switched on, um, but it will basically, uh, can you still see my screen? Yep, I can see your screen. Yep, so um, it will come up down here with a separate template and it will be, a, it will be named uh, reorder and it will have a list of products which they've previously ordered and so they can basically click. Um, so it will have an add to cart button on this page, on the My Account page, and they can go through, click add to cart on, on all those. Okay, and um, a lot of our customers have quite a few hundred items in their history, so is there a, an ability for them to search, like a, a search field within that history? Oh, okay, um, no, there's not a search box, it's, it's so just, just, uh, just as, just as an example products. for you, so yeah. let's say that they buy, um, uh, there might be a particular size envelope that they buy, so rather than have to try and search all the envelopes to find the, the three that they normally get by okay. searching the field. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not a search. Um, actually, if we go to view all orders, 
if, if it's so not necessarily the products which are frequently ordered but if it's if it's just specific to one order that they want to reorder um, you can actually do this so um, from the my account screen under your past orders um, go to view all and this will bring up a detailed list um, and they can actually click reorder um, and it will bring up all the products from that order right but if they didn't know which order they last bought those envelopes on they would have to use they'd have to scroll through the list of, of the few hundred items um, so if they can choose a few um, so they could add to cart and then you could go back here um, and then uh, let's see um, and then reorder from this one um, so yeah they would probably have to do that with going through multiple orders if if it wasn't a whole order which they wanted to reorder right okay thanks cool thanks uh, yeah so we've got a question another question here I'll just unmute you um, Lokesh hi there I have a question yeah sure can you, can you hear me yeah I can hear you um, yeah, you know, if uh, let's say like we have um, a order and our customer orders like let's say twenty items, and we want to give them like a like a discount, like oh, if you buy twenty, we want like uh, we will give you five percent discount. Uh, that sort of um, feature, do we have that? Uh, yeah, we do have promotional matrix features. Um, they are usually quite specific. Um, in terms of the setup um, and a little bit complicated, which is why I didn't choose to go through it today. Um, but if you okay. if you contact support about that, they can um, send you some documentation and um, offer some help around that, around setting those up. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that would be great. It's just because um, we want to offer uh, more uh, feature, like more, you know, like uh, discounts. If, that's good to call. I'll wait for that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so you can do discounts at a at a product level, a customer level, customer specific, um, and also at a category mm -hmm. level. So um, sure. yeah, there's a few options, and um, and within each of those, there's options for um, you know set discounts or set prices or um, quantity discounts. Right. So yeah, there's um, awesome. quite a lot. That's good. So yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your question. Uh, so I've got a question from Mac. Um, I'll just unmute you. Good day. Hi there. Uh, um, we just want to know how to. Um, we've got to make all our products uh, public as they all go into Shopify. Sure. However, for the CP, I want to hide some products um, that we don't sell wholesale. H how do I do that if they're all public? Uh, yeah. So if you so you want to hide them from the wholesale? Yeah, in the B2B, I don't want some of our dealers to be able to see these products that we have on our retail side. Okay, yep, so you would um, set them to public so that they show on Shopify, that's correct. Um, and then you would, in the security options, you would you would show do this, show product only if price exists, um, and then those um, retail Retail products would just have a zero wholesale price, um, and then they wouldn't show up there. Okay, great. Um, and also, uh, we do actually have the option of changing the Shopify setup. Um, so we can't actually change the B two B setup, but we can change Shopify to show. Um, maybe you want to show um, internal products on Shopify, and then everything else shows on B two B, so that public would show on B2B. Um, so yeah, if you contact support about that, um, we can off offer options um, unless you wanted to just use the, the wholesale price as zero dollars. Yeah, that works for us. Cool. Okay, yep, thanks for that. Um, so I've got a question from Patrick there, so I'll just unmute you, Patrick. 
Hi. Um, I've just got a question about the freight um, pricing matrix that you enter into the freight options. Sure. Um, so I understand there's a, a quote and a TBC option. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the quote option brings up a separate page where you can enter in um, the cost of freight before it set, confirms the order. Yeah. Um, now we have a problem with that because we don't we need to calculate the the um, the actual weight of the consignment right. uh, in order to produce that freight quote. Yeah. Uh, and then the TBC option, um, we because we're dealing we our offices in New Zealand and we're dealing with customers in Europe. There's a big time delay. And we want it to be as quick as possible. So sure. the confirmation email they get sent includes the payment details. But we don't want the payment details to go out if they select the TBC option, okay. because then they end up having to pay twice. Right. Right. Um, um, then, yes. Is there, um, is there another option to either close off the freight so that they can't select anything if it's overweight, yeah, and have to contact us manually, or uh, change that payment? option in that email. Uh, yeah, so you can change the payment options in here. Um, so in the settings menu under payment options, and if we look at, um, for instance, the on account option, which I used for the test order. Um, so yeah. this is um, this is the payment details here. Um, so, yeah. so you could um, you could, yeah, just remove this and um, just say, um, we'll send you your invoice with the cap or the quote with the freight, um, and then um, that will be followed by the, the payment, the payment um, details. Yeah, but that'll go out to all customers, correct? Uh, yes. For so, all orders. Yeah. Yes, it would do. Um, yeah, maybe talk to the support team because there are some options in the um, in the freight setup which, um, if it is over a certain threshold, it can be just set to quote. So, so if it's yeah. so if it's a, a lower weight, it will calculate it, um, and then if it's over a certain weight, then it will just set it to a quote. Yeah. 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 That's quote. Okay. Yes. All right, I'll talk to support. Okay, thanks. no worries. Cheers, thanks. Um, so there is a question from Gordon here. Hey there. Hi there. Hey, uh, just further to that last question about the wholesale freight. Yeah. Um, could you set, for example, uh, anything over a certain amount of products um, with a with a price range? So, for example, two products would be automatically thirty dollars. For example, anything above, then that quote would come into play. Uh, okay, so based on the value of the product rather than the weight. Uh, based on the quantity. Oh, the quantity. Um... I'm not too sure if we can do it based on the quantity. Um, that would probably be another question to send through to support. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All good, Max. Um, so, uh, is there another question from Mac? Um, Hi there. Uh, sorry, did you forget to put your hand down? Just put everything down. It's all good. Okay, no worries. Um, so we've got a question from Simon here, Simon Anderson. Hi. Um, what are the stock parameters for when you don't want to show the stock numbers? When you don't want to show the stock numbers? Uh, yeah, so what parameters does it work with? Uh, can, so, can you change those parameters? Uh, so it will work off the stock available. Yeah, but, um, but when you've got low stock, what, is that less than 10 units, less than 5, less oh, than 100? Okay. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I believe it is 
less than and can you customize um no it's set for the system so low stock um will be below four and if there's only one left uh it should say one just one okay um also when you take when you zero out the wholesale price how does that affect sales orders made at head office to you know just customers who are calling and you're producing sales orders that way um, so you can overwrite it in the um, sales order and in seven obviously um, but if you are going to do that um, you could possibly use a separate column so you can create a new price column um, if you wanted to do it that way using the restriction so, so so for our wholesale customers who might call and place an order that way, yeah, um, whoever's doing the sales order back in head office would not be able to see what the wholesale price was. Yeah, so if you don't want it to be shown to the wholesale customers and it's got a zero price, then uh, I'd recommend using another price column. So you might have wholesale one and wholesale two, so that one of them one of them is for B two B customers and one of them is just for phone customers. Right. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, probably got time for maybe two more questions. Um, we've got Tia here. Um, Tia, I'll just unmute you. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, we have some products that... Um, that when the pictures are uploaded and we have a variety of colors, the grouping of the, the products are rather uh, random. Like there'll be some products that are grouped together. Like say we have three colors yeah. and two are grouped together, one stands alone and the others would be all separated. And then, um, and then that goes for sizing as well. Uh, the breakup of the sizing from like say extra small to extra large doesn't show up on some of the products. So it's, it's just kind of random, that one? Okay. Um, it might be something specific to the setup of your um, of how your products are set up. So I, okay. I'm i not really aware of that being like a system-wide issue. So, um, yeah, if you contact the support team with an example, um, they can okay. advise what the issue is there. Um, if, if you use two options, so option one and option two in SIN 7 and you've got sizing, then um, it won't show up because it's a, you know, it's a color and size grid, so there's only two to me, two axes. Um, okay. So yeah, I'd say it will be something specific to how your products have been set up. Um, so yeah, it'll be something for this. So I kind of have to find a common denominator for how things are, are yeah. set up? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh -huh. um, so if you've um, not got a question, just um, just click to put your put your hand down, um, unless someone's got another question. Uh, Alan, Patrick, and Simon. Uh, Um, there's one coming through from Pamela. Oh, sorry, that's gone. Oh, yep, there we go. Um, Pamela, I'll just unmute you. You're on. Hi there. Hi, Daniel. It's uh, Wendy from Canterbury. Quick question. Um, actually, two questions. Can you show us how you got to where all the images for the collateral and kind of the the window dressing of the store is we couldn't quite see where you access that. Uh, for the for these homepage banners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where is that? Um, so uh, under admin and reports, um, B two B website. Um, I know you guys have an older account, so it, it's possible it's called something else, um, but it should be under admin and reports. I mean, it will be the B two B website or. Um, uh, something along those lines. 
um, yeah, it will, it, again, it will be it will be something specific to your account, just because you've got an older one. Custom dashboard. Okay, so we'll have to look for that, and if not, that's an easily we can easily add that. Uh, yep, that'll be easy. Just um, send something through the support team, and we can um, add it in there. Okay. Second question. Again, we've we've gone around and around on this kind of figuring, trying to figure out how stock is calculated. Sure. As you know, we have orders against many of our SKUs. Yeah. And so we're still trying to figure out if the B two B is publishing stock on hand or stock available, and how is stock available calculated? Is that what's stock on hand minus any orders pending in the system? Yep, so stock on hand minus open orders will be the, give you the stock available. Okay, but not per, but purchase orders aren't a part of that calculation. Mm. So when it says like when something's going to get become available, how Yeah, so, so it, won't be, it won't take into account the incoming. For the stock available. Yeah. But I know in one of the settings it said um, stock with a date of purchase available or when it was going to become available. How is that calculated on the next purchase order? Uh, yep, so if it will be based on the ETD date. Um, so it, it won't show you the stock figure for that's incoming, but it will show you the date when it's next available. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. And that's based off of just the most current purchase order sitting open in the system. Yes, that's right. Okay. Cool. Uh, yep. So, yep. So, was that? Does that answer your question? Yes. Cheers. Okay. Thanks for that. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, that concludes uh, the webinar. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, I see there's a few other questions in there. So, um, if you haven't been answered already, uh, we'll we'll be putting those into tickets and responding to them by email. Um, and again, if you are on an older interface, um, feel free to put in a request for that. Um, and we will be getting around to those as soon as we can. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.